When we think of places you might find life, we typically think of the Goldilocks zone. But Europa, a moon of Jupiter sitting well outside of the Goldilocks zone, is kept warm. Not from energy sources traceable to the sun, but from what we call the tidal forces of Jupiter itself. In the vast expanse of the cosmos, where mysteries abound, we'll embark on a journey to uncover the profound wonders that lie at the heart of the universe. Join us as we explore the enigmatic truths concealed by the fabric of space and time. This is Reveal the Mystery. If you are curious to learn mysteries of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. The Goldilocks Zone, searching for habitable worlds. Let's explore this concept further. When scientists search for places where life might exist beyond Earth, they focus on something called the Goldilocks Zone. This special zone is like the sweet spot around a star where conditions are just right for a crucial ingredient for life as we know it, and that's liquid water. This term, Goldilocks, comes from the famous fairy tale where Goldilocks finds things that are neither too hot nor too cold, but just right. It's a bit like that with planets and their distance from a star. You see, if a planet gets too close to a star, it gets extremely hot. The heat becomes so intense that it causes any water on the planet's surface to turn into vapor or steam. And that's a problem because water, in its liquid form, is essential for life as we understand it. So if it's too hot, it's not suitable for life. On the other hand, if a planet is too far from its star, it gets extremely cold. The low temperatures cause the water to freeze, turning it into ice. Again, this is a challenge because life as we know it can't thrive in these freezing conditions. That's why scientists focus on the Goldilocks zone, the region where it's not too hot and not too cold, but just right. In this zone, planets are at the perfect distance from their star, which allows liquid water to exist. Because wherever we find liquid water on Earth, we find life. So, when looking for potential life on other planets, scientists begin by searching for planets within this Goldilocks zone, because it's where the conditions are most promising for life, as we understand it, to exist. Europa's enigma tidal forces and liquid oceans. Europa, one of Jupiter's many moons, challenges our traditional understanding of habitable environments. It doesn't conform to the idea of the Goldilocks zone since it resides quite far from the sun, well beyond where traditional habitable conditions might be expected. Instead of relying on the sun for warmth and energy, Europa has a different source of heat that keeps it from turning into an icy, lifeless world. This source is known as tidal forces, which are essentially the result of a cosmic tug of war between Jupiter and Europa. Here's how it works. As Europa orbits Jupiter, the massive gravitational forces exerted by the gas giant cause the moon's shape to constantly change. This is similar to the way tides rise and fall on Earth due to the moon's gravitational pull. As Europa gets stretched and squeezed by these forces, it experiences significant stress. And what's fascinating is that this stress leads to the pumping of energy into Europa. Imagine this process as continuously kneading a ball. You're constantly deforming it, and its resilience, in this case, generates heat. That's how Europa remains warm, even in the cold depths of space. Europa's surface appears frozen, with a layer of ice covering it, but it's not entirely lifeless or static. Scientists have observed cracks and ridges in the icy surface, indicating movement and shifting beneath. These surface features strongly suggest that Europa harbors a vast, ancient ocean of liquid water beneath its icy shell. The presence of liquid water, a key ingredient for life, expands our understanding of where life might exist in the universe. This revelation shows us that habitable conditions are not exclusive to the Goldilocks zone, and life can potentially thrive in unexpected places. Furthermore, Europa is not the only celestial body influenced by these tidal forces. Other moons in the outer solar system, such as Io, experience even more extreme effects. Io is so profoundly affected that it experiences volcanic eruptions, 
due to these tidal forces. This vividly demonstrates that there are various sources of energy beyond just orbiting a host star that could create conditions suitable for life. It's a testament to the incredible diversity of environments that might support life in the cosmos. Unraveling the dark gravity, the enigma of dark matter. In the grand cosmic scheme, a significant portion of the universe's gravity remains a mystery. When we calculate the gravitational pull of all the stars, planets, moons, gas clouds, and galaxies in the universe, we find that 85% of this gravitational force has no known source. This puzzling phenomenon is not about whether dark matter exists, but rather a measurement, indicating that a substantial portion of gravity lacks a known origin. Interestingly, we might not be accurately naming this cosmic enigma. Referring to it as dark matter suggests that it's a type of matter, but in reality, we know very little about it. A more precise term could be dark gravity. This new terminology would shift the focus from the matter aspect to the gravitational aspect. In essence, we have a huge amount of gravity in the universe with an unidentified source. This hypothetical dark gravity accounts for 85% of the universe. To measure dark gravity, we examine galaxies since they are the smallest grouping of matter where dark matter manifests its presence. By observing how fast galaxies rotate and applying well-established laws of gravity, we can deduce the amount of gravitational force at play. However, the calculated gravitational force vastly exceeds what we can detect through visible matter like stars, planets, and other celestial objects. We cannot directly observe the rest of the mass that contributes to this gravitational pull, so we attribute it to dark matter. It's important to emphasize that dark matter doesn't interact with us in any known way, except through gravity. In summary, dark matter, or dark gravity as we've proposed, is believed to be composed of subatomic particles with minimal interaction with ordinary matter. Within our own family of particles like neutrinos, we already have examples of particles with weak or non-existent interactions. Hence, it's plausible that another family of particles exists that interacts so weakly that they essentially pass through ordinary matter and even through each other. Dark matter doesn't form atoms, molecules, or solid objects, and it doesn't clump together. This non-interaction is why it's so challenging to detect. The quest to unveil the nature of dark matter continues, but for now, we have to grapple with the fact that 85% of the universe's gravitational influence remains an enigma. As a bonus fact, our Earth's rotation also affects seemingly unrelated events, like the trajectory of a field goal in a football game. This demonstrates the Coriolis force, which influences the paths of many phenomena, including the circulation of storms like hurricanes, tornadoes, and cyclones.